A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. So, I think a lot of you quite enjoyed the last video I did. So that was on my top favorite philodendron of all time. So essentially, out of all the philodendron that I care for here, by the way, I have a few. You might be able to see a reasonable amount of plants behind me if you're new here, but I have a few, okay? There's a few, there's a few thousand. Not necessarily philodendron, but there's a few thousand plants. You feel me? So I plucked out what I consider to be my top 10 philodendron of all time. As you may see from the title, we're not doing philodendron today. The most popular suggestion I believe I had was for Anthurium next. Now, just to refresh your memory, I'm gonna do philodendron, I'm gonna do Anthurium, I'm gonna do Syngonium, I'm gonna do Monstera, I'm gonna do them all. This is more just you guys asking me what order I wanna do them in. So if you want to see a certain one next, feel free to leave a comment below. But today we're doing Anthurium. And honestly, this was so much harder to contextualize the top 10 than what it has been for philodendron. Philodendron, I feel like I had a really clear cut kind of just way that I saw these plants. And I've, I've changed this twice now with Anthurium because I don't, I don't feel like I have like a number one necessarily. I have done for the purpose of this video, but I guess what I'm getting at is this could change so easily because it already has in a week. So without further ado guys, here are my top 10 Anthurium of all time. Let me know if you agree. But in at number 10, I think I've told you guys recently that I, I do like this plant. It's actually very tough. I have nothing bad to say about it, but for whatever reason, I've just sort of, I don't know, I just, I guess I've fallen out in love with it. I think maybe I haven't had a specimen mature enough to be like, oh my God. So maybe that's on me. Maybe that's on me. I don't see them sold as much anymore. I don't know why that is either. Maybe other people share my opinion. But the plant in at number 10 is the Anthurium vichii, also known as the King Anthurium. Please let me know if you agree with me, because I do not see this in collections very much anymore. Does it freak people out? Is it a bit alien-like? Like, what's the tea? You gotta let me know, because I don't just think it's me. I have one or two in this shop, and that is literally it. Don't get me wrong, I think he's over there. He's reasonably mature, but he's, he's not that mature. And I, I don't tend to get any more in. I don't, I don't really feel that there's a big sort of demand for them. Again, if you disagree, leave a comment, let me know. But I don't think they are. Now, I'm not saying that any favorite plant of mine is depending on how well I sell it. You guys know that. Because honestly, the top plants on this list are the plants with actually a really low value now. So it's not about anything to do with selling the plant. I like to just mention it for context, but you guys know me. I tend to like the plainest shit. I don't, I don't necessarily follow trends or anything like that. No point. I have too many plants. I don't care. So... Yeah, the Vici eye, it, it looks sexy, and I've said before, it is quite easy. I, I don't have anything bad to say, I just, I guess I just don't like it as much as other things on this list. Is it the only glossy one on this list? Uh, nearly, you know, there's another glossy one, one that's actually matte, I wouldn't call it glossy. So there's only one other glossy plant on this list. Maybe that's it. Maybe I just don't have a love for the gloss. Who really knows? Let me know if you still have one of these bad boys. Is it mature? I would love to know. Tag me on one on Instagram if you've got like a, you know, like... You know what I'm saying? But if you have one, let me know. Just saying, just tag me. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna shit talk this plant. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't excite me as much as it used to, I guess. Now the next one on my list really does excite me as much as it used to. And I feel like uh, lovers of this channel are probably sick of hearing me mention it like all the time. Whenever I do an Anthurium video, it's probably gonna crop up. It's probably gonna crop up. And you might be thinking of a couple of different plants here, but let me tell you all about briefly. I won't go into it too much, don't worry. But the Anthurium clarinervium, fantastic plant. It's on here because I feel like nearly every person that wants to get into plants that are not run of the mill, shall we say, or wants a plant with a higher difficulty level, I feel like y'all have to go in this direction, okay? Especially if you wanna try Anthurium. I've said this a million times. You have gotta go in this direction. It's nice. It's, a, it's not even a heart shape. I mean, it is, but it's it's a bit more ace of spades type shape. It, it's, it's a bit... I, I can't explain what I mean. Do you know what I mean? It's very exaggerated heart shape because the lobes tend to like sort of stick together and sort of flap out. It's a really, really nice plant. It's not overly veined or anything. It's it's suede-like. I know a lot of people say, oh, velvet types, velvet types. Yes, but in I would actually use velvet to describe more philodendron. In the case of Anthurium, I normally say it's suede-like because if you actually touch a clarinervium, for example, I personally would say it's more like a suede than a velvet. I don't know, answers in the comments below. I've always called them suede-like. But if you said velvet, we were all talking about the same thing. So it's got a really, really nice texture and it's just easy, it's just easy. It's not without its problems. Uh, for example, bacterial rust, which is essentially those really annoying round 
rusty, crinkled, dry spots. It gets on there, that's bacterial rust. They can get that like no tomorrow. That's really annoying. Like they, they don't do well for stuff like that. But in terms of underwatering and overwatering and stuff like that, they do fantastically. So, so good. They don't love too much light, I find. They definitely like the shade more, as with a lot of them, to be honest. I mean, they are aroids after all. They're not exactly highlight plants, but I absolutely love this plant and it's still in garden centers. I can't imagine it not being. It's not in garden centers all year round though, because I've been in garden centers recently. I haven't seen any. So again, I think I touched on this last week with the Philodendron Florida Ghost. It, it doesn't feel like it's there all the time. I feel like online shops probably have it, but in terms of being able to go into a garden center and find it, I don't think you're gonna have that much luck. But that's not to say it's rare, because you know guys, that's not about that. It's literally not about that. That's not even what rare means. But yeah, I don't see it often, but it is an amazing plant and I will never shit talk it because it's great. And I do think it's a great entry level anthurium for anthurium, uh, not lovers, because you don't know if you like them yet. What's the word? Just people that want to dip their toe into it. Uh, there's a, there is a few more of those on this list though, if you're interested. But the next one on my list, is oh, I love this plant and this plant's been through a bit of a journey price-wise. I actually do not know the price of this as of recording this video. I haven't looked it up because I don't really have any to sell. I think I have mine. I might have one other. I really can't remember. I can't remember the last time I sold one. Again, just because I haven't been stocking it because things just go in and out of fashion. But the next one on my list is the Anthurium Luxurians. And it is very, very beautiful. And I, th I don't think there's anything to not like about this plant. It's got very unique petioles. They are, you know, I can't even describe the petiole, but it's not round. It's almost like flared and rippled and really odd. It's very, very different if you care about petioles, that is. I, I totally get that not many people would. Why would you? But it's got the most beautiful corrugated texture. And honestly, I know there are other anthuriums that sort of do this, like the Anthurium radicans, I think. That does it, but guys, it's not on this level. It is not on the level of this plant. Hopefully you can tell, it is not on the level of this plant. If you want a corrugated anthurium, in my opinion, this is the one. Don't even waste time with others. This is the one. And I genuinely feel that this plant is probably polarizing for people in terms of care because I've had this plant be easy care for me and I've had this plant be a nightmare for me. And the thing that it is depended on is whether it's downstairs or upstairs. Now upstairs, I would argue, is hotter. It might be drier and there might be a bit more light. Down here is generally cooler and wetter and a little bit less light. That's probably the difference between here and my studio, which on occasion I've filmed in in the past. So you may or may not know it. That's probably the difference. So it can go kind of either way, but generally I think it's a great anthurium. I don't know whether I can recommend it based on the fact I don't know what the price is right now. I don't know if it's affordable or not if you want to try it. So that's the decision you're going to have to make. But again, this isn't about me trying to get you to buy loads of anthuriums or anything, but it's a really good one if you want a corrugated one. Personally, it's the best one. It's not the easiest one. I do think the, the radicans, which I know I have one somewhere, or it might be a hybrid actually, it is easier to care for than the Luxurians, but I genuinely think the Luxurians is so worth it. It's like a really big, meaty, cardboardy leaf. It's a little bit like, stay with me, it's a little bit like Monstera Peru, or Carstenianum. Is it Peru now? It's Peru, isn't it? Um, it's a little bit like that, but sort of on steroids. Really, really good texture. So, I mean, you can see it for yourself. It's pretty sexy, and that's why it's on this list. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. Ooh, see, it's getting difficult to place them now, but the next one I have on my list, this may surprise you as to how far down this is, quite honestly. I think it actually is going to surprise some people. But the next one on my list, and again, this is why I said, hey, this could change. The next one is the Anthurium Warraquinum, or Warraquinum, as some people say. I don't know the right pronunciation. I don't really care. But it's essentially the Queen Anthurium. Um, just to let you know, I don't think I have a picture of the light form, but there is actually light form and dark form. 
And for the longest time, guys, the dark form was rarer than the lighter form. But I actually think it's switched around now. And the lighter form, you don't really see in collections. You only see the dark form. But I've said this before. I think this is a hallmark of what people collect. Because generally, if there is a darker form of something, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more sought after. It's going to be more photographed. It's going to be more fashionable. It's one of those things. It's the same thing as white variegation over yellow variegation. White variegation is always going to win. It, I'm sorry. It's just, it's a hot take, whatever. It's always going to win. It's always going to win. That's not to say that people won't buy the other, but it's always going to win. So that's the thing I'm noticing with dark form, certainly with this. But yeah, let's all remember for a second that there is a lighter form of Anthurium Warraguinum. There really is. Now, this plant was very special for me. I won't go into it. It was one of my first, like, super rare, because they were super rare at the time. And, like, was it early 2019? Super, super rare. I got one of these and it made me cry when I unboxed it. Loved it. It's a very, very special plant to me. I think the only reason it's lower on my list is because it's... <sighs> It's an undertaking, guys. Like, if you want to shop, you don't even have to want to shop, but if you do and you've ever bought like a few of these, you'll really see the rate at which they decline. Because if you buy it as an individual and you get it home or whatever, it might drop a leaf of Michael Crispy, turn into a Dorito, all the things. But if you're a seller and say you buy in 10, you really get to see <laughs> the general performance of the plant more statistically, right? Because I know I do when I get things in. When I order a plant in, I might order 10, 20, more than that. Sometimes if it's really expensive, I'll order two or three or five. It depends on the price of the plant and the risk and whatever. But when I order them in, I get so much of them that I can literally see how shit they are <laughs> to import, essentially. It is one of the worst importers for Anthurium. So that's probably why it's lower. There's no other reason, guys. They're absolutely stunning plants. Oh my God. And the bigger they are, the more um, they've got like a sense of presence when they're really big. Like they really do. If you guys remember, I mean, I had a massive one on my living wall at one point. I've shown that on videos. I also went to Botanic Gardens and there was a huge big one there. It's just got... It's got a lot of majesty to it. So I'm not knocking the plant itself. I think it's more just in terms of an experience handling it. It's It sort of makes you eye roll, you know, more often than not. So that's the only reason it's lower. And again, my mind could change. Again with this one, this next one, number six, my mind could change. This could go up easy. But the next one on my list, this should be no surprise to a lot of you, the Anthurium vitarifolium. Now, I like a lot of pendulous Anthurium, right? The Paladiflorum is very nice. I've got Anthurium Big Bill, who I'm pointing up there. He's not up there anymore. I've put him in the studio, that's why. He's a bit big. But I have a few different um, pendulous Anthurium. I think I'm sat next to a couple. That's a Paladiflorum narrow form. I've got a few, right? But I always go back to the Vitari Folium because it's just tough as nails. It's tough as nails, guys. Honestly, you can't kill them. You can't kill them. Even when they get like a really bad outbreak of like spider mites and stuff, it's so tough. It's probably not going to die. You'll save it just fine. They grow back really well. They have roots very similar to a Anthurium clarinervium. They are really tough. So they can take under watering for, let's be honest, way too long. Like, way too long. Like, serious neglect levels. They're just great plants. And I think for a hanging plant, and I know I've said this till I'm blue in the face, but for a hanging plant, they bring something different because it's like a strap leaf or a belt type plant, right? It doesn't matter whether it's anthurium or not. It's just something different to like a vining hanging plant. So I feel like if you've got a collection and you're kind of sick of looking at all just vining things, and you're like, oh, it's looking a bit samey in here. Add one of these. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, add one of these. They're incredible. And I think you're going to fall in love with it really quickly, really, really quickly. It's kind of like cartoon, almost like anime hair sometimes, the way that it, it lies in like these really big, chunky, like cartoony strands. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I will never stop liking it. See, the more I talk it up, the more I want to move it up this list. But I'm not going to do it for this video. I'll save that for a future video. But I absolutely adore it. And if you haven't tried one of these yet, I'm sure they've come down in price massively. Like everything, anything plant, they've had a bit of a journey. So I'm pretty sure they're quite affordable now. Uh, you can get variegated ones as well, if that's your vibe. But totally recommend these. These are fantastic plants. I might put one in my house, actually, because I know they're toxic to cats, but I think I'll put it somewhere where they can't chew it anyway. So I might try one of these. The next plant on my list is, I don't think something anyone's going to guess actually, because I don't think I mention it enough. I think I should mention this plant a lot more than what I am. And that is, I don't have one to grab, and I'm not really grabbing plants for this video, as you can tell, but that is the Anthurium Magnificum Verde. Stay with me, not Anthurium Magnificum. I'll try and find a picture of Anthurium Magnificum. I'm sure I have an old one somewhere. I stopped selling it ages ago because I don't like them that much. This is the Verde, okay? So imagine it basically being like a dark form of Magnificum. I guess you could call it. Pretty sure it goes by the name Verde. But it is so nice. It is like a Magnificum. It does, it does seem longer, so if it's a hybrid, that would not surprise me at all. 
I just know the name it's always gone by, and that is Magnificent Birdie. It is a lot darker. It's so tough. It is so tough, guys. I don't know what's in this thing, but it's, it's fantastic, and it always looks great. It looks so nice. They size up, and they look absolutely incredible as well. They get these really big, beautiful ears, as you might expect. They're just a good plant. Now, I don't actually know how available these are because I don't know how many people will sell them. I don't know if they're going by the name Verde. I don't know if they've got a different name. I don't really know. Answers on a postcard. And again, I haven't looked it up for this video because that's not really what it is. This video is just to talk about my favorites. But I don't see it often sold. I don't see people with it. I think this is just a me thing. So I wanted to share it with you just in case you would look and think, hell yeah, because I don't think, I'm going to go out on a limb, I don't think it is that expensive. I'm saying it. I don't think it is. I think if you look at this video and go, mm, hell yeah, I'll have some of that. I don't think it's going to be a problem for you. I hope I haven't said that and it is, but I highly doubt it because obviously all the prices nowadays across rare plants, they're all down. So I don't think you'll have a problem, but I need to tell you how good this plant is. If you've got a magnificent, you think that's a bit boring, you, you're right. <laughs> Get rid of it. Get this one. I know it seems on the surface like it's more, like it's got even less about it, but I promise you it hasn't. It looks incredible. It'd be great if I had a picture of one. Don't know if I've got like an old thumbnail that I've used for a video or something with one on, but they're really incredible. They're so incredible. I love them so much. So that is in at number five, Magnificum Verde. Right, number four. So I've put this in as what it is. I'm going to talk about it in a second, but it actually encompasses like a few plants. So I wouldn't say I'm cheating, but this probably accounts for like three different plants, but you'll get the point of this. So you might be able to see him here. Can you see this guy in the back? This, my next plant on my list at number, yes, it's number four. I've put in Mysterious Dark Boy, right? So this guy behind me is known as Anthony Mysterious Dark Boy, because I don't know what he is. Right. But what he represents, my friends, what he represents is an anthurium that looks something like, I think there's anthurium mudinum out there. There is, is it Red Beauty or Red Secret? Can't remember which one it is. It might be Red Beauty. Can't remember. But it essentially represents this type of anthurium that is matte. It's, it is kind of heart shaped. It's got a lot of dimension in all of the veining and things like that. It's got super dark petioles. It's got a lovely blood red petiole insertion. And it's just, just this beautiful matte black looking plant. Again, you can probably see it right here. It's gorgeous. It is so easy to propagate. It grows like wildfire. It pops very quickly. So it just, just grows more of itself around the base. It's super easy to propagate. It's got a reasonable value attached to it still, because I think it's one of the, the better darker anthuriums out there. I, I don't really know, but it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's so tough, guys. I bought one of them. One. <laughs> one plant. I still have two trays of it that I definitely need to sell. But I bought one and I've been able to get such a high yield. That one hasn't been cut for a long time. It does need cut because it's going to start toppling over. It's 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 kind of, it's getting silly now. But it, there's so many leaves on it. They're absolutely huge. They're absolutely beautiful. Just to show you for scale, let me just actually walk towards this plant and just show you how big it is. It's huge, guys. I'm five foot four tall. It's coming up to my earlobe. It's a tall boy. You feel me? It's a very, very tall plant. I absolutely adore it. I've had no problems with it. Little bit of heat, little bit of light, keeps it really, really dark. It's just voracious. It's absolutely stunning plant. So I had to recommend it, but I'm calling it Mysterious Dark Boy because I'm modeling it off mine. And that is because I don't know quite what it is. It could be Red Secret, it could be Mudinum. It's one of the two, probably. Maybe it's a hybrid of both. I don't really know. But I'm recommending that, but I'm also talking about the others, such as Mudinum. So you need to take it that literally. I just mean this kind of plant is at my number four, and I cannot recommend it enough. Super easy. I'm sure the other two are as well. I'm sure the other two are as well. Right, it's getting serious now. So my number three on this list, and I, I'm surprised it's not higher, but I have to stay true to my long-term sort of opinions on Anthurium, my long-term feelings and my long-term sort of preferences. But at number three, I'm putting in an Anthurium that is just so unique. There is only one of them. Now, of course, you can get cuttings of them, you can get clones of them, whatever you want. But in terms of the actual mother, there is but one Anthurium, and it's very, very special. And that is the Anthurium Delta Force. Now then, can I get this right? Because every single video, I seem to get it wrong. It is a hybrid of Anthurium pedatoradiatum and Anthurium clarinervium. And a quick backstory, apologies for repeating myself, but essentially you can hybridize those two plants together as much as you like, you're not gonna get this. You're just not, no one has. I'm not saying it's physically impossible, I'm saying no one ever has. This refers to the one plant that sort of looked like this. This is not the normal outcome for hybridizing these plants. And what I have to tell you is, if you want one of these plants, go through the right 
channels. Please, 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 please. Because a lot of people are selling these plants from places like Indonesia, Indonesian growers, just saying that it's Delta Force, charging still some rates, maybe like three, four hundred dollars or something like that, maybe cheaper, I don't know. And they're saying it's Delta Force, it's not. It's not. All they've done is perhaps hybridize those two plants, so the Pedato radiatum, can't say it, and the Clarinervium together. That doesn't make a Delta Force. It has to be this one. This one was created by, I think it was Steve Nock of Regardens over in the US. It's been passed around some collectors there. It made its way to NSE as well. I think Enid has one. I have one from there. And obviously it's now circulated a bit more. There's a few in Europe, blah, 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 blah. They're making the rounds as we speak, but I just want you to know, I don't care where you get it from. I do sell it, but I don't care where you get it from. I just want you to know that you need to get the real one if you want the Delta Force. If you don't care, you just want a hybrid of those plants, fine. I actually still wouldn't pay that amount of money. I really wouldn't. I'm sure someone can do a hybrid that doesn't cost imitation Delta Force levels, but that's just something I wanted you to know about. In terms of the plant to take care of, oh my God, like a dream, like a dream, because Clarinervium is so tough. This plant is so tough, guys. It won't die. <laughs> I'm not just saying it. I Honestly, I know you're probably thinking, oh wow, so the really expensive plant is like the best it won't die. No, it won't die. It's got a lot of clarinervium in its blood, so it's really, really tough. It looks so unique, so pretty. I'm sure you can agree. It reminds me, I think it reminds me of a butterfly's wings. I don't know what specific butterfly, but I think you know what I mean. It just, the, the weird trim on it just reminds me of that. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Where is it? Oh, it's right next to me, literally. You can't see it. It's right next to me. It's very long and pointy, actually, and it's not... It's not heart-shaped. The real Delta Force isn't heart-shaped. It's got a very wide sinus here. It's almost... It, it's approaching an arrow shape, really. It's not really a heart shape at all. Very wide sinus, very shallow sinus, and then it comes down into a big point, and you've got this... For me, it's, it's the border around the plant. It's absolutely stunning. So if you're looking for one of them, I need to tell you anymore, just be really careful. Get some opinions on the internet or whatever before you actually buy one. Don't just jump in. Please do not just jump in. Check what you're getting. Do not assume. Do not assume. So yeah, as I just mentioned, that was in at number three, I have to say true to how I actually feel about Ethereum. I'm not just going to rock up and put something in super rare, that, you know, number one, because it's, oh, it's so great and it's rare. That's cool. That's not what this is about. This is about my top Ethereum. And these two were really difficult, really difficult. But at number two, I have one of my favorite Ethereum of all time. Like, this is something I just know. And that is the Ethereum Forgetii Dark Form. Yes, Dark form. If you didn't know, I'll skim over it. You can get Anthurium Forgetii and you can get the dark form. The dark form is essentially no veinage at all. It's all green. Now this mirrors my theme, obviously, of the Anthurium Magnificum Verde that we mentioned earlier. I don't know why I like it so much, but I just do. These plants, for starters, if you don't know, have a fantastic shape. You should see it here. There's no sinus here, that little dip that you get at the top of the leaf, there's none of that. It's just pure round. It's like a, it's kind of like, it's kind of like an upside down teardrop. So it's, it's beautifully circular and it just goes into a point. It's a stunning, stunning plant. And there's something about a lack of silveriness on it that I absolutely, I'm just obsessed with it. Honestly, I've got so many of them here. I don't know how easy they are to get, so I'm not going to speak on it. I don't know. I haven't checked it. I don't think I've sold one in a while. I do have a few and I do adore them. And what I will say about them is they pop. They pop a lot. So they make more of themselves attached to themselves really, really, really well. If you buy one of these, you're probably going to grow a second one at some point around the base. And that's awesome because then you have to, you can sell it, you can gift it, you can do whatever. You can just have more of them. Beautiful, beautiful plants. They actually size up quite well. And the thing about Forgetti is, now this is a pro of Anthurium Forgetti. Doesn't matter which form, by the way. Doesn't matter if it's got silver on it. But I actually find that a lot of people have them small and they do look good small. But what people forget is this plant can size up. This plant can be really, really big. And when it gets big, it just gets prettier. It just gets prettier. It's gorgeous when it sizes up. It's so beautiful. And I just think it deserves a lot more love than what it's getting. It should be super affordable, I think. I know the regular Forgetti definitely is. It's probably tissue cultured to high heaven now. But I want to draw your attention to the dark form because in my opinion, it is way nicer. It is way nicer. And if you like things with like a dark vibe, but you don't want to spend all the money of say, like the Anthurium Mudinum or something like Ace of Spades or just something more expensive, this is a great thing to replace it with. And I am saying that assuming it's cheaper. I think it is. I think it is. Again, do your research. It should just be known as Anthurium Forgetti I dark form. I don't think it's got another name. Maybe it does, not sure. But I had to put it in because you guys know I love this plant. I talk about this plant all the time. 
I'm never going to stop talking about this plant. There's only one plant I probably talk about more than that plant, and that is saying something. And I, again, it's like the, the philodendron video. I kind of ummed and ahed about which order I was putting these two in. I think when it gets to my top two, I, I really struggle, <laughs> generally. So this order could change. But in number one, I had to put the amazing, amazing Anthurium crystallinum in there. There are so many reasons why this plant is my number one. I do think it's a good entry level Anthurium to have if you want a slightly more difficult velvet Anthurium than say the Clarinervium. Definitely, it is more difficult. But the size you can get on these plants, I'm sure I have many a photo, I hope I do, or a thumbnail or something of these plants because the size they get to is absolutely awesome. And again, these are plants that I think that generally people are keeping them bigger now, but in it, for a long time, it was a little bit like the forgetty eye where people were keeping them a little bit smaller. But guys, these look absolutely incredible. Not only that, I'm looking at one off camera now, it's on the floor, but I have to give a special shout out to the red crystallinum, and I must have a photograph of that. This is basically a version of the crystallinum, I'm looking at it now. It, it's darker, you could almost call it dark form crystallinum, I would say, because the leaves harden off to a much darker green. They have like a, it's not red, it's like a very purpley red petiole insertion, and when the leaf comes in, it comes in a bright very purpley red. So you call it red crystal, or crystalline, we call it crystal here, but it's not quite red red. But you can definitely see on the petioles and whatever else, you shouldn't get duped for a red crystallinum. It should be painfully obvious that it's a red crystallinum when you get it. So again, if you want to buy one of those, be careful because there is a huge difference in value. So if you're not bothered and you think, right, well, let's make sure I can take care of this plant right before I get this one because this one looks way cooler than the regular. I would still tell you to buy the regular one because if you can't take care of that, you've not wasted any money. Do you know what I mean? Um, the regular one is exactly the same care. I've said this a lot on videos. It's exactly the same. You shouldn't have any differences, but you'll know if you like it or not from the regular. If you have a crystalline and you haven't sized it up, please give it a shot because they look absolutely phenomenal. They're one of my favorite plants mature, actually, in Anthurium. In the world of Anthurium, they're one of my favorites, and it's not difficult to get them to size at all. Definitely not difficult. So they're, they're well, I'm saying in this video, they're one of my favorites. In the case of this video, it's the favorite. And I don't really want to pick between the red and the not red, because I love the red and I do think it's better than the normal crystallinum because it just offers more. But in terms of the fact that I didn't know there was a red crystallinum when I started loving just the normal crystallinum, I'm just going to keep it as crystallinum as my top. I think you guys know what I think of both of them generally. I think depending on your budget and what you want, you could pick either. So I'm placing them that way, but I, I don't really think it matters. It matters what you want. And I think that they're just the most awesome plant. They, they, they are, they're quite easy. I won't say the easiest things on planet Earth because they're more difficult than, say, a Clarinervium. I mean, they've got some problems that differ from, from the Clarinervium. I don't really get problems with like bacterial rust and stuff that I mentioned there, but they're very, very easy plants. So for that reason, I'm committing to it, guys. I'm listing it as my top Anthurium of all time. Let me know what you think about the things I've said. I said this on the last video, but let me know if there is something that you think I should have put in here. Do let me know because you did that in the last video and I found it quite insightful just to see what people have said. I don't feel like I've left anything out on this one, actually. To the point where I actually added the Vici in at number 10 because I couldn't think of a number 10. So I've actually put it in there because I did used to love this plant a lot. I know that in the beginning. So let me know if you think I've missed anything out. I'd be very, very, very curious. With that said, if you want me to do, for example, allocation next, which I keep mentioning that, I think that means I want to do it next, so I might, we will see. But if you want me to do allocation, syngonium, monstera, epipremnum, uh, what else? Any any other type like calathea, maranta, blah, blah, blah. Or I might, I might actually put those together, maranticii rather than uh, calathea and maranta, whatever. But if you want me to do a specific one, please just comment it below. It can literally just be the word if you want, monstera. I'll know what you mean. I'll know what you mean. If, you know, we don't have time to write big comments. I get it. It's fine. Similarly, on the last video, if you want to tell me what your top ones are, I've been really interested reading the last lot for sure. I think a lot of people agreed with me on a lot of my, my takes on that list. So please leave a comment and I would love to read them with a cup of coffee tomorrow morning. That said, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could do so. I have tons and tons of videos on this channel and I guess that's it from me. I will love you and leave you. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.